I'm Donna Drake. And I'm Harlan Friedman. And Harlan, where are we? We are at the Tribeca Festival 2023 for the North America premiere of The Listener. The Listener. It's a very serious film, so I know we like to joke around a lot, but this is a really important project, so stay tuned. With us now is Steve Buscemi Buscemi. So I found out, I read, that you grew up saying it one way, but then you went somewhere to Italy and they said it a different way. Is that a true story? Well, in Sicily they say Buscemi. Ah, so. Buscemi. Um, it's very nice to see you again. In 1996-97, at the Long Island Film Foundation, we met. And, yes, and it was your um, very first directorial debut. Yeah. Now, is it Trees Lounge or is it Tress Lounge? Talking about the way things say. Trees Lounge. <laughs> Trees. Long Island. It's trees. <laughs> trees lounge, you know. So, but congratulations because that was your directorial debut, and here you are as the director of this film. What are your thoughts on this particular project? Well, it's a very special uh, film, a screenplay written by Alessandro Coman. What it deals with mental health issues and the people who provide services in the mental health community. Tessa Thompson plays um, an at-home. Uh, warm line worker so she's talking to people all night long uh, who are in various forms of distress welcome to the show how are you I'm really excited and thrilled to be here now the listener uh, when you got that green lighted and you started working with Steve Buscemi what was the very first step you took to make this a reality well the first step was handing it to my producing partner Steve Buscemi and then him loving it and understanding why it was such an important film and that it was a film that was attainable during a pandemic and the second step was handing it to Tessa Thompson and we only hoped and then she fell in love with it and they spoke and we waited until she was available. Now that was a good move on your part, right? Because she does a lot of things. She did Creed and she actually wrote and sang some of the songs. Did you know that also? I guess you know her very well, so you probably know everything. You probably know what she has for breakfast, Ren, right? I don't know what she's had for breakfast. But she is a remarkable, we did this during a hiatus in her shooting of Westworld. So we shot the film in six days. Incredible. And Tribeca is always pushing the envelope um, out of any organization I've ever seen as far as inclusion and making sure everybody's represented. How special is it to be part of the festival this year with over 70% of the films directed or produced by women? Well, I mean, that feels really good. Yeah. And I'm a native New Yorker. I was born and raised on this island. Steve Buscemi, my producing partner, is also a native New Yorker. I mean, he's Brooklyn and Long Island, but he's a okay. New Yorker. And we made a film that stars a woman, a woman of color, who is doing a job that is incredibly hard and thankless and unappreciated. Our pretty much, I would say, 70% of our crew was women. All the heads of department were women. And that Tribeca has jumped in and answered that call to put women, producers, directors, writers, filmmakers, uh, in the lead is spectacular. It seems like mental health more than ever, I just think is like, there's a crisis going on, right? And then that mental health crisis causes a drug crisis and so forth and so on. And people are spiraling and they really are needing that connection, that human touch, if you will. Yeah, I, you know, look, one of the things that resonated me about this film is that it touches upon so many people who are struggling. We all know people if not ourselves, uh, who are going through um, either depression or a crisis or a loved one is sick um, or addiction, whether it be themselves or the family member or friend. Um, and I think, you know, change isn't going to happen unless we're aware of it, you know, the magnitude of the issue and that we talk about it and that we try and help each other. And the listener, such a wonderful, poignant title. Um, Harleen, we were talking about that earlier yeah. today. You know, it seems like this writing duo, they have things that, like, the messenger. You know, yeah. the, it's like, <laughs> it's the something. But I like the listener, right? Yeah. Let's talk about the listener. Oh, Tell yes. us about your experience with that. Well, Steve Buscemi is an amazing person to work with. I mean, every time I was working with him, he was, he was on. Even though he was directing, he was also acting with us. So I learned a lot from him, just watching him participate in trying to give us direction, but also performing for us every scene, which was wild. 
You don't see that a lot, and he's a, he's definitely an actor's director. You know. What is your role in this particular film? Are you color uh, you, number you're seven? Gonna have to see. You're oh, gonna come have on, to are see. you color number seven? Okay. I, I, I'm I'm a dark caller. I'll oh, tell you that. I'm, okay. I'm not I'm not the happy guy calling. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to be directed by Steve. Um, he's been so good to me, and to be directed by him was absolutely amazing. I feel very lucky. Thinking about the quintessential New York actor, I mean, it's Buscemi. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's easily, it's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just like, he was a fireman, man. Like, right? you can't beat that. Right? You can't do better than him. He, he's a real one. He's like, he's like the, he's a, the, the John Stewart of actors. No doubt. Like, no doubt. he reps it in that way. <laughs> now, Steve, I was wondering, um, you know, this movie really is about saving lives uh, via phone. Is there any correlation between your former career as, as a fireman? Uh, did you use any of those experiences when like, when putting your vision for the film together? Well, actually, I mean, so since this is about mental health, yeah. one of the things that has, you know, happened since 9-11 mm -hmm. is that firefighters and first responders are now admitting yeah. that they need help yeah. and they're willing to talk about it. Big tough guys. Yeah. Before that, it was always, you don't talk about it, you keep it in because whatever, they saw it maybe as a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of weakness no. to say that you're in trouble. It's a it's a sign of strength that you could admit that and be Absolutely. vulnerable and seek help. Absolutely. Mental health is such a big issue right now, um, especially after the last few years. Uh, what? How do you feel about this film? Like, or, or, or is this film going to open up people's minds and help them hopefully get the help that people people need? Well, I've heard from a very special person called Dr. Barbara Van Dalen, mm -hmm. who worked on the film. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen the film, but yeah. she said that, that the film will really um, bring uh, attention to what it's like for people who work in the first response. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with Dr. Barbara Van Dalen on the, my show, A Million Little Things, that yes. deals with yeah. mental health, and it's... Um, a subject that I'm passionate about, that I think we should all be passionate about, because we all have mental health, and there are so many things that we can do for each other and for ourselves, for our well-being. Uh, I also am a big Steve Buscemi fan, so right. I'm very excited well, to see we this love film. Steve I met uh, actually Buscemi. Me and him met through Apatow on King Staten Island, and. Uh, He's been that was a great film, by the thank way. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, really, really great. And he's just been nothing but a supporter of mine and really amazing to work with and just like a buddy of me and the guys. And he's put me in awesome positions and to be here. And uh, this movie's really cool and I think important because I think we're all back outside after COVID and not, <laughs> not remembering really what happened. And I think this movie did that. Obviously, the career, Dogs, Fargo, everything Sandler, everything. For me, The Sopranos was such a special moment. Pine Barrens all-time greatest episode with the 25th anniversary of of the beginning of the sopranos coming up is there any special memory that you look back at those those days with well just my very first day on set when i was directing the pine barons uh being you know on set with james gandolfini and just feeling like oh my god i could it was hard for me to separate him from the character mm -hmm. because he was so good at it uh, but he was the sweetest guy, but it didn't matter. He could say something sweet to you, and I'd still get like, what did he mean by that? You know, is he being sarcastic? Uh, I loved it. I just loved the, the, the cast, David Chase, uh, Terry Winter, who wrote that episode, Tim Van Patten, who was a director, uh, a major director on The Sopranos, and that led to Boardwalk Empire. Yep. Uh, I just love it. Let's talk about your past for just one second, yeah. a film you did, King of Staten Island. Yeah. I got to tell you, me and the guys were watching that film. You could t you, did you guys just have fun the whole time? I mean, that's the environment Judd likes yeah. to set up on his yeah. sets. So we just had the most fun uh, writing. And hopefully we can get back to that soon. And you, uh, the studios, can pay writers. Um, yeah. But uh, I just, yeah, no, I was very lucky to be a part of that. And Judd brought me on and as an actor. I ended up leaving as a co-producer. And I just got to like go through a whole entire summer of boot camp of uh, Judd Apatow. So and it was really do, cool. And can we do like a, a reenactment of that poster? I mean, like the Staten Island, like Which the King one? of Staten Island. I don't know that one. This one right here. Was it? Oh no! <laughs> yeah, you mind taking your shirt off? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> okay, I asked. I asked, it's and it was answered. Right? Yeah. I asked, and it was answered. At least I asked, right? 
But Donna, ask him something intelligent about the movie. Yeah, that's kind of what we do. He's like a comedy relief. Speaking of comedy, I actually did do stand-up. Nice. So I did. I, I went to Comedy University. So now where did you study, or did you just like go for it? So when I was young, I uh, went to Frank Sinatra School of Arts in New York City. And uh, from there, I ended up doing stand-up when I was 19. So I did stand-up for a long time. First person that like really took interest in me was Larry Wilmore. Ended up on the nightly show with him. And then it's just been rolling since. Thank you for all the work. I know we've got the listener, the North American premiere coming up. So maybe afterwards, maybe we mix up a little relish and ketchup and we'll uh, yeah, love yeah, a little yeah. <laughs> Steve. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it was great. It was great to see you again. We are here on the red carpet for the North America premiere of The Listener, and we have a very special guest with us. Um, I want to do this the right way. Um, je m'appelle Harlan. Salut, Harlan. Je m'appelle Stéphanie. <laughs> we have one of the... Uh... Oh, oh. <laughs> right. Comment allez-vous? Très bien, très bien. Oh, Il fait beau. Comme ça. Ouais. Okay. Anyway, you know so more than I know. That's pretty good. Eight I, years of French. I know how to, I don't I don't know know. How to like order a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But the the fact that you got the Luger drop. I mean, I'm very lucky. I am very lucky to get what I get. So no, Peter Luger is the best. You got to represent it, especially at the Tribeca Film Festival, right? right? right. Is there any other place? Right. I got to be honest. I had my Emilio Blatos hat on the last few days, but you got that honest living drip right there. So it's not, is that Bang Bang? I want to know bang, you. Who? What? Did you get that at Bang Bang? No, I didn't. I got. Where's Bang Bang? Uh, I'm down on Broom Street. No, no, I'm okay. not from New York, man. I'm from LA. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back I got this at, actually in East LA. I know East LA Echo Park, a place uh, called. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Right yeah. on, right on. When you're in from LA, I know when my friends are from in LA, are they just showing you off all the new spots to go? Like, exactly. no, I got this Italian place. No, you got to come to this spot. That's what it's all about, man. Right. I got to come here with these guys because I know nothing about New York. Without right. them, I'll be lost, man. I'll be like a guy with a backpack on. Right on. That's it. What's the first spot they take you to when you get to New York? Oh, man, I go to his house to get some oh, wait. <laughs> to go to sleep, get some rest, you know? Yeah. And then where? And then we just travel the city, huh? Travel. Yeah. We're coming the oh, camera. Look at that. So, yeah. <laughs> I saw the three of you coming. I'm like, what is this? You got your own, like, podcast coming on? And do they also act? Do you think they about do. Yeah, these are actors a, right a here. Future, future projects, yeah? Oh, yeah, yes. of course. Right. We're so what's coming up next with the three? Well, Bobby and I already did a short film together a couple of years ago. It was an action thriller. Seven minutes, it won a couple uh, awards. Yes. And then Bobby did his own thing. Yes. yes, I have a short Just film right now at Cannes. <laughs> well, it was at Cannes. We weren't ready for yeah, this. Yeah, so I write as well, too. And yeah. Bobby's such a great human being. My first feature movie, he got me because he couldn't do something. Oh, and he, he recommended so me. So. So true, and that's so. how the business works, right? Exactly. I guess. I don't see even see it as a business. I mean, we're very close friends. And we just want to create art. And uh, it's such an amazing thing right now to see Bobby right here in Tribeca. He was here last year also for Jack Garfine's uh, documentary, true. our acting teacher who yes. passed, legendary guy. Um, and this year, you know, let's see what happens now, next year. I'm proud as a friend. And I'm sure. Nice to meet you both. Yeah,